Also have the latest out of Corpus Christi. Police are now working to identify human remains found near the apartment of a missing New Braunfels college student, Caleb. We only got about five, ten minutes before yeah. this thing goes down. It's a race against time. We got one more on the backside. All right. One more on the backside. Oh. To save six adults and two children after the boat crashed into a bridge off Big Pine Key early this morning. Body camera video from the Monroe County Sheriff's Office shows a dramatic rescue. We got one coming up. Fire rescue crews lowering a ladder from the bridge before tending to the victims, grabbing them one by one as the boat is taking on water. The boat's going down. In one clip, you can see what appears to be blood on the boat and can hear a child crying in pain, suffering from a leg injury. Okay, man, you're okay. We got you. I know, but I know it hurts. All right, you're going to have to hold on to me, okay? We need you to be strong, okay? A delicate rescue of another passenger, also suffering from a leg injury, lying on the side of the boat as it was sinking. We need to get him up. I'm holding him from going in the water right now. Three people were airlifted, two to Jackson Memorial Hospital's Ryder Trauma Center and one to Jackson South Medical Center. Four others were taken to Lower Keys Medical Center in Key West. It was a mess. A lot of hurt people. Officials say the 35 center console boat was traveling at a high rate of speed before it hit the bridge. Here's what's left of that boat at an impound yard in Ramrod Key, the bow a mangled mess. FWC investigating whether speed or alcohol were factors in this crash. I smoke weed, yeah. Body cam video shows that while 60-year-old Charles Legault was pulled over by a Putnam County Sheriff's deputy, the deputy first smelled marijuana and then asked Legault if he could search the truck for more drugs. Legault consents to a search. Within seconds, the deputy finds what he believes to be drugs and drug paraphernalia. So what are these dope baggies in this cigarette pouch right here for? You use cocaine as well? No, no, no. I got uh, six heart attacks. Okay. Well, what does that have to do with the three baggies with the white pouch? The white substance in that cigarette pouch right there. Don't know. Lego is asked to get out of the truck. He's searched oh, and then asked to stand in front of his truck while the deputy searches the inside of the vehicle. The deputy first finds a handgun in the seat. Uh, looks like a Ruger 22. Then the deputy finds more drug paraphernalia. Yeah. What kind of pipe is this? Not a clue. I had been in the truck. That's a methamphetamine pipe, sir. Eight minutes and 45 seconds after the traffic stop, the Using deputy continues to search for drugs when this happens. Yeah, it's it's good. Whoa. What the f A chemical bomb just exploded in the deputy's face. This is what the bomb looked like before it exploded. And this is the explosion in slow motion. Although the deputy struggles to breathe, He manages to call for backup and places Lego into handcuffs. Put your hands behind your back. I don't know what the f that was, man. Moments later, it becomes obvious that the chemicals that exploded in the deputy's face are making it even harder for him to breathe. Yeah, yeah it's like in my f***ing lungs or something. <laughs> we then see the deputy's uniform covered in a white chemical powder as the deputy takes off his body armor. The powder was believed to be chlorine. The deputy was later taken to the hospital to be treated for respiratory injuries from the chemical explosion. He's just very lucky is what it is. Retired JSO Director of Homeland Security and Investigations turned News for Jack's crime and safety analyst Tom Hackney says the deputy's injuries could have been a lot worse. Had that been filled more or had been larger or it got in his eyes, I mean, you know, you can talk about blindness and those kind of permanent things that could happen to him and permanent lung damage depending on how close he is and, and you can see again the struggle to breathe just really highlights how dangerous these traffic stops can be. 
It was very windy that day and Hackney says the winds may have helped to dissipate the fumes from the explosion and that may have helped the deputy. I think everything was in this officer's favor to that that it had a successful outcome as much as it did that he wasn't uh, harmed worse than he was. The explosion prompted a bomb squad to be called in to make sure the truck was cleared of any other explosives before other deputies could search for more drugs. The following day, deputies raided Legault's home to look for more explosives. Although they did not find any more bombs, they did find more illegal drugs. Legault remains in jail without bond on multiple felony charges related to trafficking meth, possessing an explosive device, and battery on a law enforcement officer. Oh, God, there's Using a animals? Oh, there are gerbils oh. in there. Yeah, animals abuse. Animal abuse. What the heck? I got a gerbil. What the heck? <laughs> Multiple gerbils. Multiple. Multiple gerbils recovered. Recovering rodents from Matthew Pancake's pants. For your safety, is there a gerbil inside yeah. you? So, how did Pancake end up in this yeah. sticky situation? <laughs> Let's go back to 312 Tuesday morning. Close police, anybody in here make something known? Officers respond to the roosters near Hilliard after getting an alert from its security system. <laughs> Trying to break the thief's code, they retrace his steps. I don't see blood anywhere else. And it doesn't make sense that he would have blood on a rock before he threw it through the window. About 10 minutes later, the officer responds to Petland and finds this pup. Come here. Come here. Inside the store, you can see the suspects smash their cages open. Petland's co-owner says Pancake let out about 15 animals before taking flight. You got blood all over you, buddy. Come on. I don't know if you're going to bite or what. You got a pet by chance? Fast forward to just before 4 a.m. Police find famous footwear is broken into as well. Hey, buddy, make yourself known. Pancakes accused of finding new boots to book it from the scene. In style for his alleged crime spree. Have you heard about the guy who broke into Petland? Uh, I'm looking right at him. He's asleep on a bench. He's in the leopard print. Mr. Pancake, you're under arrest. Don't move. Officers find glass in Pancake's pants and a dog collar on him and... Oh, there are dribbles oh. in there. Animal abuse. What the heck? I got a gerbil. What the heck? <laughs> Multiple gerbils. Multiple. Multiple gerbils recovered. Busted in an outfit appropriate for his wild adventure. He now faces breaking and entering and vandalism charges. Well, I mean, if they're not going to be able to sell them, maybe we can keep them as a eight sub mascot. The investigation later revealed they're hamsters. No doubt a memorable mission for these officers, too. Yeah, we, we got the gerbil banded. He, he, he literally, literally had the gerbils in his pants. Yeah. Oh, God, they're going to request this body camera video. It seemed to come from nowhere, a massive piece of a construction crane slamming onto cars on the 3rd Avenue Bridge, April 4th, 4.30 in the afternoon. Um, can I call you back? That one of our bridges yeah. just collapsed. This Fort Lauderdale officer was one of the first to arrive. He would learn it was a large chunk of metal that fell onto the bridge from several stories up. I'll go ahead and get the Coast Guard call. Ma'am, are you in the car? Over there, away from the crane. It's already fallen. It could keep falling. 
Watch this video again from the security camera on the bridge. Driver Carol Zinzer was able to get out of her black Pontiac almost immediately after the impact. Ma'am, what hurts? Um, absolutely. Which car were you in? Responding officers seemed surprised she was unhurt. My mind is okay. pretty messed up. Okay. But if I could have my phone. We'll, we'll get everything for you. But on the other side of the bridge. No, no! Officers comforted Gemma Lynn Castillo, who was bleeding from her head. Watch the video again. She was in that second car, a Tesla, her face badly cut. Mark Sarazen was driving that car. I just felt it shear off the front, bounce off the front of my car. Construction worker Jorge de la Torre would not survive, coming down with that piece of steel. He was behind me. And all we heard was just a loud noise, and the tower just flipped over. And Where was he when the tower flipped over? He was behind me, standing. Uh, the tower was next to us, and the tower just came this way. On top of him? Well, yeah. In the middle of it all, a school bus also on the bridge at the time. I don't want you under that crane. As co-workers consoled each other, witnesses and officials alike marveled that with this happening at rush hour, so many people were lucky to have escaped unhurt. Keep your hands out of your pockets. Body-worn police cameras in Utica, New York, captured a teen's final moments Friday night. 13-year-old Neam Y, seen here in a family photo, was stopped along with a second teen by Utica officers who were assisting an investigation into two robberies in the area. The boys matched the description of two suspects and were walking near where the crimes took place, according to a Utica police press release. I just pat you down and make sure you got no weapons on you. Officers soon take Y to the ground. A chaotic scuffle follows, and then the police chief says Y was immediately given first aid on scene, but later died at a hospital. Another body cam view shows what appears to be a gun in Y's hand, circled in red by police. Officials say they recovered this replica of a Glock firearm. We meet deadly physical force with deadly physical force, including that there appears to be a handgun. Well, it's replica or not. Sunday night, police and city officials met with community members. Many of them, like Y and his family, are refugees from Myanmar. The crowd pushed back on claims the teen was armed. While fleeing, the youth displayed what appeared to be a handgun. Tensions flared from there. The three officers involved are on administrative leave with pay per protocol, while separate department and state investigations move forward. I'm Laura Aguirre reporting. Coming up tonight for you on the investigation into an alleged use of excessive force by a Fort Worth police officer, and that's the officer getting out of the vehicle that you see there. This was during a recent arrest. Tonight, the department has released two things, body cam video and also surveillance video of the incident. And the new video kind of helps fill in some of the key moments from the viral video, which is what uh, part of what you saw there, that we shared with you last night. Our Aaron Jones today sat down with that woman who was arrested while making that video. That's great community relations too. Carolyn Rodriguez says what happened to her is not surprising. I've been arrested like this probably about five or six times. The self-proclaimed cop watcher has a YouTube account and streams live police interactions online. That's just to make sure that everybody's safe, that they're not violating anybody's rights. And we're back. She says Sunday around 3 a.m., something caught her attention in the West 7th Entertainment District. Police tell us they were responding to a hit and run investigation. I heard a lady say, from down the way, she said, I paid $31 to park here. I'm, you're not taking my car. And then that's what tipped me off. How do you know if they paid or not? I just started to walk up and I saw two ladies. As she streams the interaction, you hear a Fort Worth police officer ask her to go to the other side of the street or she'll get arrested. Then, I mean, you're what good. are you talking about? Go to the other side of the why? Right Wait, tell me why first. We're doing an you're under arrest. You're not no, 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 I'm not under it. Okay, you go. Stop resisting. Stop resisting. She tells us she doesn't remember what happened next. She's bleeding. I, I got knocked out. I was. I, they said I did a death gurgle, and the next thing I know is I woke up in the in the in the hospital, chained to the bed. 
handcuffed to the bed. Wait, tell me why first. Today, Fort Worth police released body cam video of the incident, filling in some of the gaps. You can see the officer slam Rodriguez to the ground. After getting medical attention, she was booked into the Tarrant County Jail on multiple charges, including resisting arrest and evading arrest, a visible black eye in her mugshot. I have bruises all everywhere. This arm right here, I can barely move it. And so the elbow was knocked out of the socket, and I think the shoulder was, but I don't know. Now Fort Worth police are investigating the use of force. Mayor Maddie Parker has called a special meeting on Friday, and the city's Office of Police Oversight Monitor is also looking into the situation. Airline, we're busy. The officer who has been with the department seven years has been administratively reassigned out of patrol pending the outcome of the investigation. Rodriguez says she wants accountability. I don't see how you can resist when you're unconscious. And plans to file a lawsuit against the department soon. In Fort Worth. A well, new video of a water rescue this past weekend in Ocean City, New Jersey. Lifeguards saved several people, including two children, who were caught in a strong rip current. CBS Philadelphia's Liz Crawford joins us now with more on what was a stressful situation. Liz? Well, nine people needed help at 930 on Saturday morning, and that's a half hour before lifeguards are on duty. Fortunately, most guards were already at the beach and able to jump right into action. <laughs> it's perspective we don't usually see, an aerial view of a water rescue. About a dozen lifeguards jumped in the water Saturday morning to save those struggling to swim. Look here, people swimming and swimming, but getting nowhere. Ocean City Beach Patrol said initially four people went in the water, then five others jumped in to help. Soon, all nine people were struggling. Two were brought to safety on jet skis. The other seven were given flotation devices and guided to shore by lifeguards. Coming down the beach now, thank you. And that drone's right over top of them. Ocean City Police launched its drone to help determine how many people were in the water. Within minutes of the calls for help, everyone was safe on the beach. Did they get them? Yeah. Yeah, they got them. The current's really bad, though. Yeah, so the current keep... is bad. They've been saying it all week. There you have it. Now, two takeaways from the beach patrol. Don't get in the water without a lifeguard on duty. This was another reminder. And number two, for all the Ocean City people out there, the beach at 9th Street often has tough water conditions. That's right from the beach patrol. It has to do with the shape of the jetty. So if you're swimming there, be extra careful. Mm, that's for sure. Liz, thank you so much for that.